and welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And I am on Twitter. And I'm also on Facebook. Are you? Good for you. And it's Sean, been a long time coming. And Sean is my friend. Well, I, I've connected to you on these things. But are you my power friend? That's what I want to know. Maybe. <laughs> All this to say that uh, today, uh, you know, everybody's using social media these days. And sure, you know how to use Twitter. And sure, you know how to do Facebook. But do you know how to use it with power in mind? Our lovely friend Amber MacArthur uh, is here to join us today. She's a brand new book called Power Friending. And she's kind of got those advanced, high tech, fantastic social media tips to make your social media world just full of power so your friends love you. So basically, it's how to be a social media ninja without actually using the word ninja like every other social media thing does these days. Yes, that's very good. All right. So let's take a break when we come back. Amber MacArthur, Power Friending and the top 10 tech tips around social media, or Power Ninja tips. Well, hey, before we get started with our Power Friending episode with lovely Amber MacArthur, how are you? Good, great good. to be here. Good to, to, good to see you. Um, let's talk a little bit about our sponsor. Uh, we have a contest running right now from HowDoYou.com. It's the 25th anniversary of uh, the dot-com domain. And uh, you can win up to $10,000 in cash. Uh, plus one or ten iPads. And the way you do that is you zip on over to HowDoYou.com and you tell your story. Now, my dot-com story I have, have lots over the years, but dot-coms profoundly changed my life because I bought my latest car online. Ooh, and instead risky. of you know, going to the, you know, the, the dealer and haggling, I went to CarCostCanada.com and uh, they basically tell them what you want and, then, and what model and what make and what color and they fax it out or email it out to all the local dealers and they all fax back their best price and then you just go in, you pick the best one, you go in, you present it, they give you the car for the got cash. So, you know, dot com is sort of taking the pain out of buying a car. Oh, I agree. I'm going to change my name to ambermac.com and just leave it at that. That's brilliant. Good idea, huh? Yeah, okay. So head on over. It's a great idea. <laughs> You're ineligible for the contest, by the way. <laughs> um, head on over to, to howdy.com and, uh, and enter that contest. I'm sure your dot com story is way better than mine, certainly better than hers. So uh, check that out, howdy.com. A question right. for you about your car that you got on, uh, on that uh, site. Could you specify whether or not it comes with an Apple sticker on the bumper? No, that was a custom add-on from a friend of mine. Actually, oh, a power okay. friend. <laughs> a power friend. <laughs> nice segue. Okay. So, Amber, you have your first book. It just came out, I guess, this spring. Yeah, I'm following your lead, Andy. Andy wrote a book. I was like, I have to write a book. So, uh, it just came out in June in Canada. Mm -hmm. And it's all about social media and how to use it to grow your business. Fantastic. And uh, so, let, so you know, the reason we wanted to have you on the show was to talk about the book and to kind of get your insight into kind of real power tips on social media, like Twitter and Facebook and that sort of thing, and how to kind of make that uh, be the best of, uh, at that. Yeah, so. I mean, there's a lot of different tips you can use. If I had to uh, pick just a few tips, let's go through uh, maybe five or six of them. Sure. The number one would be to act authentically. And I think we all know this when we're going to wet the web. We don't necessarily like to see companies who are behind certain online accounts. We like to see individuals. We like to see people who really own those accounts. And we also like to hear about real stories. A great example is Blend Tech. If you know those blenders, they do the yeah, videos, yeah. Will It Blend? Yeah, blend. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they blend iPods, iPhones, all this kind of stuff. Well, the interesting story about that is, the marketing director discovered the founder of Blendtec on the showroom floor. He was actually blending a two by four <laughs> without any video cameras on and the marketing director had this light bulb moment and said, hey, we should put this on the web. From there, they actually realized a 500% sales increase within a year of all those videos going online because it was kind of an authentic moment. Mm -hmm. And so that would be my first tip for people out there looking to build a brand. So don't, like, don't build a character, like, just be you. Just be you, I mean, unless you have a really great idea for a character, but I think it's important just to be you and to be genuine and transparent and I think people really want that more and more online. Yeah, I think you definitely if you build a character, it can come across as exceptionally fake unless you really work at it. And that's maybe one of the good things about the old Spice Guys is overly fake, but then at the same time, they authentically interacted with their fans using that uh, Twitter campaign they just it, recently exactly. did. Exactly. I mean, and if you look at a company like BlackBerry, if you go to the BlackBerry Helps account on Twitter, they actually have photos of all the people who are answering their comments or answering your comments on the Twitter site. So it's kind of cool because they've allowed themselves to really have a face to their brand. Very good. Very cool. Um, comments. I know, you know some people think that social media is a, a sort of... Um, great place to be a fire hose, just to fire out all this information to ignore what's coming back. But you say that comments are really important. Like the 
the responses? Yeah, I think the responses are really important and having conversations is really important. And that kind of leads into my number two tip, which be, would be to act consistently. And we all know that. I mean, we've, we've all managed these different websites forever. And it's really important for us to go in there and if people leave comments, to actually reply to those comments mm -hmm. and to have conversations with people, even if they're negative comments. And I think that's a really good point that people need to understand. If someone is critical of what you do, and we've all had that, uh, then you should go and respond to that person and try to engage and hopefully turn them into a friend and someone who you can actually have a relationship with. And so I think it's very important for people to act consistently, to be in the comments. And I always say it like this, uh, it, it's like going to the gym. If you only go to the gym once a month, you're not going to see the results that you want to see. And the same thing applies to social media. You need to consistently engage and have temp some type of schedule for reaching out to that community and, and having conversations. How often would you recommend for that? Because you know we're all busy these days, especially people that are working on the internet. We're always online but we aren't always interacting with the things that we should be. How, how often should we be checking that stuff? And Sean, 24-7, there is no need to sleep. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Come on, get oh, with the program. Seen, okay. she, she tweets at like 2 o'clock in the morning. I, I, got, I got some Twitters. <laughs> I have a bot that tweets for me at 2 a.m. <laughs> no, really? <laughs> no, it's a really good question. Because I think it depends you know, who you are, what you're trying to do, but you should try to check into your accounts you know, at least once a day. I sometimes recommend maybe just getting a coffee in the morning and spending half an hour responding to people. I mean, I know you guys are great at it. With with lab rats and butterscotch, you know, just getting out there and talking to the community. And I think people can kind of learn from that. It's not just about broadcasting and shouting out there. You want to be able to have that interaction. Do you, and do you find that those one-on-one -on -one conversations actually benefit the, great, the greater group? Um, I think they do because yeah. the reality is with many of these sites, especially Twitter, they are public conversations. You know, it's not as though Twitter is a private place. Anytime you reply to someone, anyone else can see that reply. I, I do it all the time. I go to people's accounts. I see who they're talking to. Not that I'm stalking them or anything. Uh, and then I go and I check out who they're following and I might want to follow someone they're following. And so there is sort of a community building effort there when the conversations happen. And do you have to kind of, in your response or in your query, do you have to kind of somehow bake in like a link to the previous conversation? Like how do you do that in 140 characters on Twitter, for example? Yeah, that's really hard on Twitter to actually include the previous conversation. But I think for most people, you can just kind of respond to that individual. And then some people even like to go back and just kind of follow the trail a little bit and see yeah. what the conversation was and how it happened. I mean, ideally, if you're using all these social media sites, you do include links to things that you want people to check out and talk about. And you do drive all the traffic back to your own website. And I think that's another thing people should keep in mind is that you don't want to have the conversations just out on these multiple sites to try to drive people in one direction. Right. At the Amber Mac Corporation, do you have like a great big strategy on how you deploy your social media approach? Well, the book. <laughs> when I wrote the book, that became my strategic plan. It's right there, public for everybody to see. But, uh, you know, again, that kind of brings me into the third point, which is to plan ahead. And uh, I, I know, Sean, you're a, you're a good planner, I have to say. Yeah, I try. You try. Uh, and Andy, I don't want to look your way because I would be revealing that you aren't. Um, so I think for our third tip, it's really important to plan ahead, to actually have something in mind as far as your goals. Why are you engaging in social media? What do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish? And that can even be a one-page document where you say, this is my objective. Uh, this is, these are the tools that I'm going to use. And to have that plan in place. And it's especially important for bigger brands, but also for personal brands, just so you have everything down on paper in a way that you're going to measure your success as well. So, so, so should an individual take the same approach as a corporation? Well, I think it's a little bit different for individuals. I mean, one thing is if you're an individual building a personal brand and you already have a job, you mm -hmm. want to be careful about what you put out there. So your objective may be to get your brand out there, get established, you know, become an expert in the community on behalf of the company you're working for, but you don't necessarily want to have conversations out there that make it look like, hey, I'm kind of digging for a new job, because let's face it, that happens all the time. Yeah. I mean, I've had conversations with people who say, you know, I don't like the people in my organization engaging in social media because they're kind of my property and I feel like they're developing their own brand and companies feel as though they're losing control of that. I think that will continue um, and as an individual I think it's your responsibility to make sure that you still represent uh, the people you work for and uh, still have some uh, you know some respect for that organization. Right, absolutely. What about do you have any tips for organizations on you know sort of developing rules and an and approach like that? Yeah you know that's another one of my tips is to develop a social media policy and a lot of companies forget to do this you know they get out there and they have a small team of people and they start engaging online and they forget that they should have something in place for their entire community because the most effective social media plans are when the entire community is involved and Zappos is one example of this, the online shoe retailer. If you go to their website, they have 500 Zappos employees who use social media, have their accounts listed on the website and so they literally have an online army of people who are out there talking about the Zappos brand and monitoring the Zappos brand. That's an ideal situation. And with a social media policy, this isn't to police people in your organization. 
organization, but instead to give them guidelines in terms of how to represent your brand yeah. and also to tell them what to do if there is a social media disaster. Yeah, with 500 different people trying to leap on that, that could be pretty anarchic if you didn't have some sort of rules or policies in place to Exactly. Deal with that. You need to have a policy in place. Uh, a really good example, if you go to Intel's website, they have a social media policy that they actually publish for everybody to see, just a one-page document that can be shared uh, either within your group or online, and it's a great thing to have to keep on the right track and just, you know, set those guidelines before you start engaging in a pretty significant way. What if somebody says, you know, you suck? You suck? Yeah. Andy, is this out of personal experience? Yes, we are, no, because I always say to Sean, you suck online, and I need a response. <laughs> well, then you're in trouble. No, I think, again, another trip is to point, or tip is to embrace criticism. Uh -huh. uh, I'll give you a good example. Um, Pepsi, earlier this year, they had a Pepsi cheer program that they did where they're coming up with this new idea for a new cheer um, for junior hockey in Canada. Yeah, yeah. Now, a lot of people hated this cheer in Canada, and so this kid started this Pepsi group, which was against the cheer. Before they knew it, there was 100,000 people who were part of this Facebook page and who had this hate on for Pepsi. Now this is really interesting because you know normally a company would say oh we shouldn't engage in social media. This is a dangerous place. Look what happened. Well the VP of marketing who was behind this initiative at Pepsi, he did something really smart. He actually got in touch with this kid who started this page and he called him up and had a conversation over an hour on the phone and said why did you start the page? Um, why do you feel this way? And he's actually got gotten his feedback on subsequent promotions to try to engage him and you know bring him on as really a brand ambassador. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So great idea. I mean, we all often want to kind of turn our heads and not deal with the negative criticism. I mean, none of us like it, but you can turn it into something positive. Well, I've seen, and I've seen before where somebody has sort of come out and said something completely obtuse. I mean, back in our call for help days, we got criticism all the time. Is if you engage the individual who's, who's yelling, most of the time they've had, they're having a bad day yeah. and they happen to, or, or they feel like they, they have to have a chip on the shoulder because they want to prove something to their community or whatever, right? So very often it's not a severe criticism at all. No, no, they just want attention. I mean, mm -hmm. and that's unfortunate. I get it all the time. Someone recently wrote on my blog, they said, I'm going to drive you off the internet no matter what I do. Somebody and I'm said thinking, that to you? Yeah. Really? Wow, that's yeah. a lofty How, goal. Good luck with that. And, uh, and what did you do to them? I just wrote them back and I said, hey, I'm, uh, yeah, I know, I didn't do anything to them. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry you feel this way and uh, I hope you keep visiting my blog. <laughs> and sometimes, Thanks for watching. you know, even just kill them, killing them with kindness can be the best thing that you can do. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons you said earlier to be authentic. And it's important because if you respond as you to these things and, and actually face this criticism, they realize there's actually a person at the other end. They're not just hitting up the, the Lab Rats Corporation. They're actually getting Talking in our someone. faces. Yeah. And I think people love that. You know, I will say there's one other quick thing that I will say is that, um, you know, at the end of the day, though, you can't put lipstick on a pig if I can steal from uh, President Barack Obama. So you need to have, a, you know, you need to be a good person first, have a good company and offer good things, good services or products or whatever it is, um, because no matter how much social media you do, you can't fix your company in the first place. So remember, Make that a priority and uh, also listen to what people are saying online. Keep an ear to the digital ground. How do you do that? Um, there are lots of tools out there. One of them is called Google Alerts, which I'm sure you're familiar sure. with. Yeah. It's kind of like Ego Surfing 2.0. So you go in there and you put in your brand name or a name of a business that you want to track and then it will email you updates on a regular basis when anyone mentions that name online. A great free easy tool. I use it right now for power friending to see when conversations are happening. Uh, or also using a dashboard like um, Hootsuite which allows you to have all of your social media, um, your uh, accounts in one place and you can also track conversations based on keywords. So there are lots of tools out there, many of them free so you can listen to what's happening and respond effectively so you don't have a PR or social media disaster on your hands. Okay. The book is called Power Friending. Power Friending. By Amber Macar MacArthur. Amber Mac, I guess. Is that how Amber you Mac. It? And so. soon to be AmberMac.com. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> plug, plug, plug. Where can we get it? Uh, you can check it out. It's at uh, Amazon and many of the uh, other big booksellers online, or it's in stores uh, in Canada at Chapters and in the U.S. at some of the big bookstores. And it's launching in Australia soon as well, as well as other countries. Wow. Well, I think it'll do really well. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. Good to be here, awesome. guys. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, final thoughts from Amber Mack and her power friending book, as well as Clip of the Week and your pictures. As you can see, Amber MacArthur's figured out how to count to five, at least count down. It's the hardest job in, the, in this uh, show, by the way. Um, That's what Matt tells me. Yeah, well, Matt's our producer, and he learned to count years ago in television. We, we can't get it straight. Anyway, five, thank you, Amber, four, two, done. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Amber will be back with us for, in a few minutes just uh, with some final thoughts about her book and how you can win Power Friending by Amber Mack. Uh, but first, let's take a look at a clip from a new show called Status Update. 
uh, Tools for Twitter with Jay Goldman. That's right here. Welcome on deck. I'm Matt Harris. Hi, I'm Jay Goldman. Welcome to the A-List. Hi, welcome to Miss Download. Twitter built the API really early, and it's in fact a big part of the reason why Twitter is as popular as it is, because it allowed people to go and build things like TweetDeck or fun little quizzes in, that interact with your Twitter and that kind of thing without needing permission from Twitter to actually go out and do it. You can think of it as aftermarket parts for your car. So you might have a car that was made by BMW or Toyota, and you bought it from them directly, so that's kind of your relationship with Twitter. But then other people can make parts for that car, like windshield wipers or stereos, and you can choose which ones to add, and you don't need to go back to BMW or Toyota in order to get permission to add them, you just go to the store, buy them, and install them directly. All right, so check out the full clip of Status Update, new show uh, produced by Mr. Carruthers over here. Uh, check, on, check it out at butterscotch.com. All right, yes, sir. time for pictures, no? Yes, this is a, a sort of form of uh, power friending here. People can send their pictures into us and be our friends. Very good. On this screen right here. Okay. So we've got a couple this week. First one is from uh, Hamad, who is in Toronto, who is showing off a view very similar to the one that we've got behind us over in the corner there. Very nice. So watching us on his screen there. Okay. Thank you, Hamad, for sending that Thank in. Thank you, sir. And our good friend Zoltan from oh. Eastern Europe. He so is cute. in the Carpathian Mountains here with his wife. Oh, that's a cute so picture. a travel photo. Great. So very good. Thank you for sending that in. Well, and uh, if you've sent one in before, feel free to send one in again. We've gotten a few from Zoltan and a few from some other people. And if you haven't sent one yet, do it. And you can send your, pic your pictures to Power Friend Us with your photos day and night, multiple times at labrats.tv. <laughs> or more simply, feedback at labrats.tv. But where's the fun in that? I know, I know. No fun at all. Well, let's call on our lovely friend Amber Mac back in because uh, we'd love to give this away. Can we give this away? Yes, and I will sign it if anyone's interested in that. Oh, yeah, very good. All okay. Right. So how, how are we going to give this away? We're gonna, maybe we should do a little Twitter campaign, I think, maybe? Yeah, let's do something on Butterscotch on the Twitter account. Okay. So how about if people have to follow the Butterscotch account, what's the official account it's name? At Butterscotch TV. At Butterscotch TV. Yeah. And uh, tell us, in 140 characters or less, why you deserve to win the autographed copy of Power Friending. That's good. Does that and sound then you'll, good? you'll retweet that? I will retweet it, because that's good. part of the strategy. Right, exactly. Get the word out about the book. Get you guys on following Butterscotch TV. And get you a chance to win yeah, a copy yes. of the book. Very cool. OK. All right, so uh, do that. Now we have to put a time limit on this. So here's the date by which you can uh, do that. Uh, and we will draw randomly. Yeah, we'll name. randomly draw one of the and we'll mail it out. submissions. And you can be anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter where you We'll mail it to Zaire if you live there. Yeah, that's well, a good idea. Yeah, yeah we good. will. Power friending in Zaire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, final thoughts. I have two questions for you. Okay. Well, what was the biggest social media faux pas you've ever made in your life? That I've ever made? Yeah. Um, well, I followed this guy, Andy Walker, <laughs> and uh, it didn't go well from there. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you. No, the biggest fo uh, social media faux pas, you know, probably the thing I've done that uh, I regret it the most, I was sending someone a message on Twitter, and I thought it was a DM, and I actually tweeted it by mistake. Yes. That is very easy to do. Yes, I've done that before, too. Yeah, and fortunately, I don't have any exciting drama in my life, so there was not, it wasn't really that, all like, that revealing. Honey, can you bring a pizza home? Yeah, yeah, it was something like that. So it wasn't a big deal, but people should be very careful before they send a message. Out. Like unlike Gmail undo, where you can take your message back in 30 seconds, you can't do that on Twitter. So whatever you're doing, be careful. And the number one tip you could offer anybody, who may even, maybe you know, just to in, in, increase their followers, is what's the number one tip? Yeah, that's a great question. I think the number one thing to do is to follow people who you like and you like the conversations that they're having online and have conversations with them. The last thing you want to do is to look at your Twitter feed and you see it's just you broadcasting messages. You want to make sure you're replying to lots of people, you're retweeting what people are writing out there. And so really, it's like going to a cocktail party. You're not going to stand in the corner and start yelling out at people, right? You want to have, well, I mean, you, sorry. <laughs> there is a mild exception here. Um, but for in anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for anyone else, uh, you want to make sure that it's a two-way conversation. Should you be too worried about how many people that you add to your uh your Twitter and your Facebook, or should it be more about people that you're interested in? I'm sorry, I don't understand that question. No, you can never be. You can never be uh, too friendly. I think yeah. you know some people like to limit this, and if you're having private conversations or posting family photos, you want to really control the environment and the number of people who you let into your Facebook page. Right. But if you really want to brand online, you shouldn't limit the number of people. On the same hand, you shouldn't focus on quantity. You know, right. if you're a small business owner and you have 500 people following you, and you have a restaurant in a neighborhood. 
if those 500 people eat at your restaurant, you don't need any more followers. So don't think about you know the Ashton Kutcher million follower land because you will never get there and you don't need to. Right. Thank you for your fantastic expertise. Thank you. So my race to a million with you is now officially off. You okay. don't need it. The book is Power Friending with Amber Mack. Uh, check it out at your local bookstore. Thanks for watching this week. You know, it would be foolish for us to be here with the lovely Amber Mack if you weren't out there dreaming about her. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>